So, hi, Brett. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Alma. Um, yep. Um, yeah, this is just a five minute coffee uh, catch up. So hopefully you have your tea or coffee ready for our few. Great, nice. So um, yeah, let's just start with an introduction uh, about you and what you do and your relationship with GC and DC. Okay, yeah, well, thanks. I mean, my uh, uh, relationship with GC and DC goes back a long time. I think really I first entered the competition probably um, in the mid 1980s. Um, and I entered on a relatively regular basis, I think probably until about the mid 1990s. And over that time, I, you know, won various awards um, and got kind of special counsel awards and things. And some years I didn't win anything. It's just how it goes. Um, then in the late second half of the 1990s, I was invited um, to be a full council member. And I served on the council for some time and then um, chaired the council for two years. Um, before thinking that um, maybe time to pass the baton on to somebody else. Um, and now I'm very proud to be a, a, an ambassador of the council and um, uh, I do whatever I can to, you know, promote its work and to encourage people to enter the competition. That's great. You know, I, yeah, you have a, a long tradition with GC and TC then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And this year you helped us uh, write the 2D design brief for small work. Yep. So I will yep. um, just quickly run through the brief and then we'll ask you some questions. So uh, the brief is, we all recognize, applaud and admire the countless heroes and heroines who have assisted us throughout the lockdown. Central to fighting COVID-19 is our National Health Service, NHS, an appreciation of which has been identified by a rainbow motif in the windows of many homes and businesses as an abiding symbol of hope, strength and determination to fight and overcome the pandemic. Therefore, we invite you to examine color in all its glory and diversity as a starting point for the design of a piece of small work. Your proposal should seek to reflect and celebrate the NHS as well as the other key workers working selflessly for a recovery and a bright future. To help you focus on colour, please feel free to use whatever materials you would like in conjunction with precious metal. The object you design should give off a fun, colourful and optimistic vibe. So just, um, yeah, Brett, what would you, we would love to hear what you, uh, what your take on that is and what you think the judges will be looking for uh, in this section? Well, clearly it's, it's, a, it's a topical uh, question this year, um, mm. using the theme um, that uh, sadly we've all become rather familiar with, with the uh, lockdowns and COVID-19. Um, I would say probably uh, initially, um, the, the thing that stands out for me uh, from, as it were, reading that is, is the idea of colour, colourful, uh, or exploitation of colour, and the use of different materials. Um, small work traditionally uses a palette of techniques uh, which provide colour uh, and texture in particular. Um, and they do tend to be traditionally enamel, uh, gemstones, engraving, chasing, and perhaps the addition of one or two other kind of traditional materials, um, like, you know, perhaps marbles, uh, semi-precious stones, or even chagrin and uh, materials like that. Um, we're in the 21st century these days, and um, there is a lot more latitude in the materials that people could use. So I think, you know, there's, there's plenty of scope for people to combine precious materials, which I do think have to be at the heart of a design for a piece like this. Yeah. But with, no, you know, traditionally non-precious materials, you know, perhaps, perhaps even plastics uh, and wood uh, mm -hmm. and textile even, uh, alongside all the kind of marbles and semi-precious stones and enamels that have traditionally been used. Um, that might be a starting point for somebody to, to um, start thinking about the materials and what colours and textures they would provide and yeah. then how they might be used into a, into a design. Yeah, because I guess you can be very creative in terms of the material because the colour is so strong, like 
the most important thing in this brief that they're like standing uh, out. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And um, I think, you know, it might be worth as well, Alma, just reading out, there is a definition on the website of um, what a piece of uh, small work, uh, kind of what, as it were, categorizes a piece of small work as, a, you know, makes it small work as opposed to something else. Um, have you got a copy of that there, Alma? Is that something that you could? Yeah, so under this brief, it says um, the different, the definition of small work is typically smaller scale work made in precious metals. These can include intricate mechanisms, hidden features, and elaborate surface decorations. So I think the elaborate surface decoration is something where the color um, and possibly the alternative materials come in. Mm. Um, the intricate mechanisms. And the thing about uh, small work is there is an element of humour and fun uh, and intrigue about a little piece of uh, small work. It's the hidden mechanisms, it's a surprise, it's the something that happens when you press that um, mm. or flick that lever or what happens if you unscrew this bit. It, it's that sort of thing that I think characterises um, small work. Um, and we would urge entrance to 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 think about that those intriguing details of the piece that they made that they make small work is it is small um but it's intriguingly small mm. and i guess that one of the things is fun and creativity of being one of the an optimistic vibe and i guess that hidden detail is is a fun element Absolutely. isn't it yeah, and, and, and the other thing that I think it should have, and it, you know, it's, it needs to, it's, it's the opportunity for a designer, and in a way the craftsman as well, you know, if the craftsman is also the designer, but even if they're separate, it's, it's an opportunity for both of those two skills to, um, I think, show some flair. Mm. It's kind of exciting. It's excited and joyful in the prospect of making something that will make people smile and make people enjoy the little object that they're holding in their hand. Enjoy playing with it. Enjoy the texture of it. Enjoy the colour of it. It's a joyful thing, a piece of small work. Mm. Well, that sounds, that's great. That's great inside tips for our entrance, definitely. <laughs> So actually, I think that moves uh, well on to the next question I have, which is your top tips for entrance. And right. I guess specifically for the design sections. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, and, uh, you know, often, you know, your top tips come in, uh, you know, three top tips or five top tips or whatever. And to be honest with you, um, I think really what I would suggest is that it is quality, quality, quality. The thing about a piece of small work is the quality of the thinking, the quality of the materials, the quality of the design. Um, and that will, I think, come across in terms of your presentation, how beautifully it is pre presented on, 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 online for us to judge, will give us an indication of how beautiful your thinking is, the quality of the design behind the presentation. So. Mm -hmm. The quality of the presentation is extremely important. Um, the clarity and the quality of uh, the illustration of, of, of what the object is, is also important because as judges, we are looking at it fresh. You understand what you have drawn um, intimately because it's come from your mind and you've drawn it. But we need it to be made crystal clear to us so that we don't miss anything. It's such a shame, somebody designed something wonderful and as a judge, you might miss it because the communication in terms of the design drawing is not quite there. So think about the quality of your communication, how you're going to put that across. Um, and then finally, the flair, that, that little spark in your design that, uh, you know, as judges or down the line, maybe as a future customer is going to make us smile and go, I want that. That is brilliant. <laughs> That's that's what we're after. Yeah. So a piece of small work is not a collection of components put together that all just sort of work okay. It has to have that spark. That's something that makes us go, wow, look at that. Oh, I'm excited <laughs> now. I want to see yeah, all so, <laughs> No pressure, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> but as a designer, you know, you know, a, a jeweler can design small work, a silversmith can design small work, everybody can design small work. If they've got that, 
sense of intrigue in, in terms of doing things. Um, and that ability to have a little bit of fun, enjoy it. It's, it's, it's something like small work is, is where the designer can really have some fun. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so you, you mentioned you entered the competition in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Um, so if you look back or maybe now, is there anything as an entrance you wish you had known if, when you entered for the first time, or if you were a first time entrant now, what would you want to know? Um, I think... One of the reasons why um, I entered a competition for, I think probably about 10 years really, in truth, you know, from the first entry to the last. Uh, why I carried on entering competition, even though some years I didn't win anything, was that I was always struck by the, um, I think, Frank, the, the seriousness and the care and attention that was taken to um, your, you know, everybody's entries, even though they might not actually win anything. Um, and it, you know, it, I was always very appreciative of that because to put together uh, a, um, uh, a good entry into the competition takes a lot of time. Yeah. Um, and you know, you need to be assured that that time is not time wasted, and it's certainly something that is going to be given the serious consideration that your time would mean that it deserves. And I think you can be confident in that. And I became confident with that over, over about 10 years. Um, and initially, I didn't know. I thought, you know, as somebody that the Goldsmiths Company or the, the, the competition has never heard of, living up here out of central London, um, is anybody care? Is anybody going to care whether I enter or not? Is anybody going to really take much interest in what I, you know, uh, put in? And I can assure entrants that um, we do care and we do give it a huge amount of concentration to look at what you've done. Yeah. Um, and even if you don't win something, the other thing that I think is, is, is worth something, and, I'm, and Alma, you'll have to explain this better than I, but um, whether it's going to take place in 2021, but, you know, ex you know, entries that don't win anything, you know, can be exhibited and they are seen by people who maybe uh, are interested in what you do or become interested in what you do. And so it can become, you know, uh, not just something that you do for its own sake, but it can become a commercial um, uh, lever that helps your business as well. Um, oh, definitely. None of this is wasted. Put a huge amount of effort into it. Do the very best that you can. And the results will follow. They just will. Mm, I agree with that. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Something will happen, even if you don't win. It will. There it might will. be some other positives that come out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well i think that's that's great and um just a reminder to everybody that the deadline for this is the 31st of january 2021 and thank you so much brett for taking five minutes of your time this morning to to speak with us uh no you're welcome elma and uh good luck to everybody uh uh merry christmas to everybody if you're watching this before christmas um and once that's out of the way um get sat down at your uh, uh, drawing desk or your computer and uh, get working. Great, thank you so much. Thanks very much, Bye. Bye.